there are many ways to extract objects using Photoshop. But the one I like the most is alpha channels. And that's because with it, it's way easier to extract clouds and hair and branches. I want to make this quick for you, so let's dive in. We're going to extract a cloud and a tree. Something important to mention is that to use this technique, the subject or at least the part of the object you need to extract needs to be very differentiated from the background. So let's begin. First, we are going to channels. If you can see it here, then go to window and press channels. Now we can see the red, green and blue channel. And we're going to use the one that it has more contrast between the cloud and the background. This depends on the image, but in this case, it's a red channel. Now we're going to drag the red channel to this icon, and that is going to create a new channel. We're going to Image, Adjustments, Levels. And basically what we're going to do is to create even more contrast between the background and the cloud. This is going to enhance the blacks. You can see now how it contrasts even more. I think this is a good place. And we can make the whites stronger too. We have to be careful when we're doing this because we don't want to have then blue edges or very hard edges because it's not going to look real. So we need to be very careful and maybe try two times or three times till we have it right. I think this is okay. And now we have like the base to create the selection. Now to create the selection, we're going to hold Ctrl or Command if you're on a Mac and we're going to click here. Now, when we select two channels, it always going to select the lightest parts. So in this case, it just selected the cloud, so it's perfect. Now we go to layers, and we're going to make a new mask, pressing here. And now we have a cloud. I'm going to make a solid background. Now, there is a bit of blue, and in this case, it's very easy to correct that. We're just going to image, adjustments, and maybe here in saturation. And we lower the saturation almost completely. And that's it. We have ourselves a new cloud. Now, let's go to another example. And I think this is the most complicated one, because I can't imagine to extract this tree using the magic wand. Here we can already see that the most contrasted channel is the blue one. See the difference between this and the red, for example. So we're going to use the blue one. And again, we're going to drag this channel to this icon. We're going to create a new alpha channel. And now we go to image, adjustments and levels. And again, we're going to, to play with this till we have enough contrast between the tree and the background. We need to enhance the whites, of course. If you want to see closer, then hold Ctrl or Command and plus. And I think we're good. Now let's press OK. And here I'm going to use the lasso tool to erase all this. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that the white is in the background color, then press fill and background color. Okay, now we can see the contrast between the background and the tree. So let's hold Ctrl or Command and click. Now, as I said before, when we select channels, it always going to put these marching ants in the lighter area. So now we have all the white selected, but we can change that easily. Let's go to select inverse. Okay, now we have the tree selected. Let's go to layers and make a mask. Perfect. Now we have an amazing selection considering all the detail and all the branches of the tree. Now, we're going to put this landscape behind the tree because I want to show you something. 
this is already a great selection but if we're going to use this tree in front of a darker background we're going to see these type of things happen and i have a quick solution for that let's double click on the tree and we're going to make an inner glow with the blend mode multiply And we're going to play with the opacity till we're happy with it. And this is affecting also all these branches. Look at the difference. And that's it. In a very few steps, we have a very complex selection and we can use these objects to make great compositions in Photoshop. I hope this quick tip helps and if you have any questions please put it in the comments down below. See you next time!